Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Breakfast Club. Our guest is the famous James <laughs> M. Ritchie, who wrote a book. Here's the book called The Newport Bridge. Fascinating book. Uh, it really talks, it really addresses a struggle between, I guess, Jamestown and, and Newport had the best access. And there's uh, so many. So why did, why did you write the book, Jim? Well, Tom, thanks for having me, first of all. Very nice to be here. Um, <clears throat> I first got interested in <clears throat> the story of Newport when I was at Salve Regina <clears throat> University recently, where I got my doctorate degree in humanities. And I <clears throat> started thinking uh, or find, you know, realizing that Newport has always been a desirable place you know, throughout its history. And that um, it's always been difficult to describe Newport. So I wanted yeah. to find out a little bit more about Newport. Henry James uh, said about Newport when he was uh, writing around the turn of the century in 1906 that New there is nothing harder to do than describe Newport. So I became interested okay. in learning more about Newport and then uh, post-war Newport. So after uh, the World War II, Newport was really um, in rough shape. It had 10% um, of its housing was, dil was in, uh, you know, dilapidated and uh, substandard. So they really need to do something about Newport. It was a sailor town, you yeah. know, from yeah. throughout throughout the, the 20th century, really. Mm -hmm. um, and by the end of World War II, they really needed to do something in Newport, uh, to Newport. So there were revitalization efforts going on. Um, and then I became interested in the bridge because uh, I was surprised to find out that the bridge didn't open, wasn't built until 1969, oh. which seemed very late for me yep. for there to be a bridge uh, in, from the southwest. How did they communicate into, from into, island to into island? New Ferry. So for years, ferries, 300 years, a ferry brought past people from Jamestown to Newport. That ferry ended the day the bridge opened, June 28, 1969. Uh, so on June 28, 1969, uh, the bridge was built, and it took 20, so that's further interest. Why did it take so long for the bridge to be built in the first place? But after World War II, it seemed to take a long time. So I started doing research as <clears throat> into that, and found out that um, right after World War II, as World War II was coming to an end, <clears throat> uh, Governor Theodore Francis Green at the time pushed for a bridge between Jamestown and Newport. The Jamestown Bridge was built from, from the mainland, from, um, the, south, from, from you know, uh, the main part of Rhode Island over there on the West Bay, to, um, from Saunderstown to Jamestown was built in uh, 1940. So between 1940 and now it's the end of World War II, cars would come over and have to wait for a ferry in Newport and then go over the, over the bridge. Well, the Navy opposed any, building any kind of bridge, really, uh, in Nar over the East Passage of Narragansett Bay. Yeah. They had many um, naval activities going on in Narragansett Bay. They basically had that whole southern portion of the bay dedicated to the defense industry. Torpedo, torpedo development. Tough, tough thing but, to overcome. Oh, so they, they said vi virtually any path between Jamestown and Newport would, would, be, would, would be even the least objectionable path they would be against at that time. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> not long after that, um, it, um, um, Governor J. Howard uh, McGrath became uh, governor. Uh, <clears throat> F. Green became a senator. McGrath goes to, goes to Washington, D.C. to see James Forrestal, who um, uh, 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 says the Navy will, will allow a bridge. Forrestal gets tapped by Truman to become Attorney General, Solicitor General of the United mm -hmm. States. The bridge advocate Lewis McGrath, um, and in December of that same year, um, uh, 
uh, the Navy Forestall writes a letter to Theodore Green saying, no, we never really did approve the bridge. So, but none of this, I didn't know any of this, okay. because, but uh, the, the story when I started looking into it was, it took a long time to build a bridge because of the controversies after World War I. And cost which too, controversies? Yeah. yeah, oh, cost definitely, Tom. Yeah. They, um, but that comes a little bit later because uh, first you had the objections of the Navy to overcome. Oh. So they finally over, overcame those objections. And then the, the people of Jamestown objected to the bridge. So in 1948. Why, why did they object? To well, it? it's uh, interesting. Uh, they owned two concessions that were pretty valuable, control them. The bridge, uh, the Jamestown Bridge, that was built in 1940, yeah. which had tolls, and the ferries, yeah. so, which, which were revenue generating. Oh, yeah. Plus, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ideal, I mean, billionaires built uh, you know, castles down right. there that, that are that, still that, being toured. You know, today. Yes, in Newport. Yeah. That's so yeah. yeah. So they couldn't get there. So, the, so e even though there was a bridge to Jamestown, you would drive over and wait at the ferry landing for the bridge to take you over to Newport. So, oh, um, I see. so I they, see. so Jamestown so was benefiting a little bit of that, right? They, yeah. So they, now they had people waiting, probably spend. You know, they had the ferry, the franchises, but they claimed, they claimed the reason they didn't want the bridge built was because of. Um, the financing plans that were always put forth for the bridge. Yeah. So in 1948, uh, the state passes, uh, establishes the Narragansett Bay Bridge Commission, which was really the predecessor to the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority. It tried for uh, four years to get a, a, a bridge approved by first by the Navy, then by um, uh, the state, uh, Jamestown was objecting, so they couldn't get bills passed in the state. I got it. Yeah. To, um, yeah. They couldn't uh, uh, to get the thing moving, and in 1952 they dissolved, and there was plans for a, um, th a, a tri-state, three-state uh, highway going from the Con Connecticut through Newport and all the way to Provincetown. Um, so the, 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 this um, Narragansett Bay Bridge Authority kind of ceded to that effort, which, which was very expensive to do. Yeah. Uh, the bridge would have been part of that highway. Yeah. Um, but, but that's how they were trying to get the money. Yeah, they, well, it was going to be a, yeah. a lot of it was the bridge. Well, yeah, very expensive. <laughs> so, they, uh, so that was, and, uh, that was um, 52 and 53. There was even ideas for a bridge from um, Warwick to Barrington. So the people in Newport said, you know, without a bridge, they're, they're going to stagnate economically. It is. Meanwhile, you know, they were trying to consciously turn Newport from a sailor town into a tourist right. center, right. which um, required urban renewal. Um, uh, in fact, back to that picture of Newport after um, uh, were, uh, while this work was going on, one of the consultants working with uh, the people, the um, urban development people in Newport, uh, looked at Newport, and um, I know the Fall River people don't like this, uh, this, this, st this statement, but he said, what you have here is Fall River with a view. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was complimentary, intended no, to be complimentary sure. at that point. It's okay. well, listen, <laughs> we've had worse. <laughs> so that was, uh, um, so all that got me involved in finding out about these controversies, which I told you about. Yeah. And that, that's how I became interested in it. The other, the how other. How long were you working on this? Well, <clears throat> o over time, you know, the, uh, yeah. over time, um, I'd say it took me a good three to four years of, of doing yeah, it. Because I'm working on another job full time, so I had to do this, yeah. um, you yeah. know, uh, uh, part time. But I had a, um, th so. Records must have been everywhere. Records were, uh, th that was, diff th so I didn't know how to write this story after I started researching it and finding all this out. Yeah. Um, I wanted to tell a story, not write a PhD dissertation that would be academic 
yeah. of academic interest. Yeah. Part of the program at Salve is, the theme of the program is how to be human in a technological era. So every student's work has to have a component of their work that's technological. So I chose the bridge. Uh, but I didn't know how to, I wanted to, I wanted to learn about it and tell about it. I didn't know how. Um, there were very interesting things about the bridge technologically. It's the first bridge that used off, uh, on, uh, uh, before the Newport Bridge, every major suspension bridge, you, cables were spun. The main cables were spun, just like it, it had been from the Brooklyn Bridge days on. Designed by John Roebling, how to do this, yeah. right? The man who conceived the, new, the, the Brooklyn Bridge. This is the first bridge where that, those cables were made off-site and delivered to the bridge. So that famous cable spinning that's associated with suspension yeah. bridges didn't take place. There were other, other elements of the um, bridge that were um, um, technologically innovative, a, a, a painting, coating of the cables. Um, so that fit into the program. Uh, well, because now the, I had that to write, but I d so I found in the Providence Library has index cards of every story from the Providence Journal fr uh, from basically the 19th, the 20th century, so from like nine, early 1900, 19 to 1995 it ends. The, the Newport Bridge is a category in these index cards, as is um, the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority. So now I had a chronological listing of every story that appeared in the Providence Journal about the bridge, um, you know, from 19, fr really from, well, from the formation of the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority in 54 till, uh, till it was, you know, even Did now. They, even. Were they supportive? Very supportive, yeah. Kate Wells, the special collection librarian, very helpful, um, and uh, they, they, were, they were great. Yeah. So I, I started off with, the, so now I had this chronicle, now I could tell a story chronologically yeah. about these things. John Chafee's papers are at the uh, 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 URI, Special Collections Library, um, uh, and then the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority and the engineers Parsons Brinkeroff have lots of information. But it was the story I was interested in. And, and, and those index cards uh, allowed me to lay that story also out. Also in your book, you talk, you talk about the, the different parts of the book, uh, the bridge and how it's made. Mm. Not only do you uh, focus on the struggle between Jamestown and Newport, right. and, and no question that it, it, it had to be a resort area from being a Navy town. Right. That was, a, that was economically important. That's right. How they never make it. Right. That. And plus the fact that you explained in the book the different passages that the bridge people had to put together with the depth of the water, yes. the ledge. Well, there was many, first there was many paths that were debated and fought over. Okay. So, right, so that, yep. that was uh, yep. one, one thing. Finally, when they got a path, uh, well, you know, in 1955, uh, the first thing the Bridge Authority um, uh, w looked at was a tunnel because the Navy wanted a tunnel in 1955. Oh, I see. I see. So technologically that would have been really something. Um, yep. The one in Baltimore was being built around the same time under the I Chesapeake see. Bay. Uh, but then um, the path they chose then had, uh, it was big, long, and passage needed a, a, a long main span. That, re that lent itself to sus a suspension bridge. Suspension bridge is a very you know, pretty. They take, you know, they, 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 it's symbolic of the towns, really, that they think of the Golden Gate Bridge, the yeah. Brooklyn Bridge, um, and the Newport Bridge has become that. But the, technologically, the bay uh, where the, the, under the main span was a, a, a very, very deep gorge. They had to go down 162 feet uh, drilling. Um, so they had to come up with innovative methods for that. Like fill the, the gorge somehow? Yeah, no, no, no. They had to, uh, the, the, the two main piers of the bridge actually are on either side of that gorge. 
Ah, and I it's, see. It, okay. And, and, uh, but even that, the bedrock is like 400 feet below. And you couldn't, you can't drop piers 400 feet below. So they, they actually have, uh, they built piers upon which a foundation is built that holds up the piers. So that was all major work, you know, major oh, yeah. uh, innovative major expense, work. So. And, yep. So they use this method rather than, you know, typically on some of the bridges, you'd, they'd go down and they'd build these caissons and make all the water come out. They couldn't do that. So they drove piles down and built up this foundation type um, structure. And those, uh, those piles all had to be cut off. They had to have people go down and cut off like uh, over a thousand tops to these things to make that level. Uh, they, they needed to call in a, uh, the largest um, uh, crane uh, in, um, on, on water uh, from New Orleans, the Avondale Senior, to come up and help now build this foundation. Um, then uh, we mentioned the cables, innovative ca the innovative cable yep. built off site, the tripod paint, uh, which failed immediately. And bridge was built in '69. Bridge, uh, the bridge paint job began failing in early as 1970. Took three Rhode Island Supreme Court decisions, ten years to decide who was wow. at fault for the wow. for the paint failing. Um, so oh, yes, tech, a lot of technological. You mentioned that. Oh. that I think that was the. Yeah, the I mean, question. I, I, I have no idea what the Golden <laughs> Gate Bridge was like or, or the Brooklyn Bridge, but uh, you know, I know that from your words, your words and wisdom, you see that the different <laughs> gorges that they came about and all the places you come, the underwater structure you don't see right. until you get down there. Right. Look at, you know, right. Uh, yeah. And that main span, Tom. Um, is that means the, the between the two main towers is 1,600 feet, uh, feet um, which coincidentally is the same size as the as the uh, Brooklyn Bridge's okay. length. So it's a it's a big so it's a big undertaking. So yes. the building of the oh. bridge became a big undertaking, um, and it started in uh, well before that we they, it, the pol the political story continued. Because once they now um, uh, got the legislation, it required the voters of Rhode Island to approve a referendum to guarantee the bonds for the bridge. Right? What was the so, amount? Well, I think the first amount was 30, uh, off the top of my head. I don't, yeah. I don't, um, I'm thinking the first amount might have been in the 36 million to 42 million dollar range. It, it they had failed assumed the responsibility in 1960. That the voters of uh, the New Point had assumed, assumed the responsibility of those bonds. That, they would say, have to guaranteed, have to guaranteee uh, the seven, uh, you know, a portion of them. Yeah. Not all of them. No. <clears throat> so um, it failed. The first referendum in 1960 that, uh, was uh, denied by the Rhode Island voters. In 1962, and a lot of this time, you know, it's political will, right? Oh yeah, because the, the gov if you don't have the governor and uh, the backing of the, the head, you know, the the, the speaker and the, the, the house and the, Gosh. it's not going to go, right? No. So there was always this contingent from Newport that was all for the bridge, but they had to convince the journal, which were really straight journalism, who, what, why, when, where, yeah. and then the editorial pages were where the. Uh, opinions Opinion, were, were yeah, made. Yeah, right. And at first, the Providence Journal editors were against the bridge because it, because it wasn't self-sustaining. In other words, the traffic estimates yeah. right. did not did support not justify that the tolls could be, would yeah. pay off the bonds. Yeah. So, uh, and Jerry Dwyer, the heroes of the bridge are John Chafee when he became governor, Jerry Dwyer, who was the head of the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority, and uh, Alfred Hedefine, who is the um, engineer for uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff, who was involved, really, That's after World eating. War II, yeah. uh, all the way. Now, uh, Jerry Dwyer always said that those estimates were extremely conservative and painted the wrong financial picture for the bridge. Finally, in 1964, 
So, so 60, referendum failed. Chafee becomes governor in 1962, and in his inauguration speech says, made it clear, I am for the Newport Bridge. So now you have the advocate of the governor. Right. You have a proponent, you know, you have a man, Jerry Dwyer, who is Republican state chairman uh, for, uh, and then Chafee's campaign manager. Uh, and you had, um, and then you had um, momentum building now. So by 1964, uh, the second referendum came up and it passed. Yes. But then, what was the amount? Do you I, I don't remember okay. uh, exactly. I don't want to get. I, no, no, but okay. it's um, okay. I, at that Probably because more because than the fifth. well, it, 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 yes, it was, and it kept going up. Oh, so. Gosh. Um, and the reason, so I don't, I don't want to give you a number because it, it eventually it cost 61 million. And I use that number. Some mm -hmm. people say 58, some people say 61. I use that number because that's what people published in 1969 when it opened. And now if you look at websites and things about the Newport Bridge, it'll say 58 million. And I don't think they're counting the three million dollars that the state ultimately had to use in its finance. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Back then, I think maybe it was 47, and then there were cost overruns, and then it was around 52, and the state had to continually up, up the ask yeah. through, four ref, through three more referendums. So there were three escalation points like of a, dollars. I mean, I'd, I should... But each, each, time, uh, you know, each time the, uh, the bridge was sustaining when it, when it was operating, uh, more than they expected in order to meet the requirements or obligation of the bonds. The attendance In actuality? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jerry Dwyer was correct. Those were very, very conservative reports. Yep. Um, I think they estimated that X amount of travelers would cross the bridge in, uh, you know, five years, and that amount was surpassed in a year and a half or something. Uh -huh. And then, uh, uh, you know, so, and then, T the br 10 million people cross the bridge today, or, 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 so uh, annually. Right? And you're right; it's the route that gets to uh, the, tour the resort area from the population centers. Yeah. So from, you know, Connecticut, New, you know, New York, um, Boston. Well, Boston could go that way too. Yeah. Before the bridge, you would could you had to take the ferry or go up through Providence and around yeah. and yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or yep. da even down through 24, or take the East Bay, because the Sakonet River Bridge was built in 56. What, what kind of presence does the Navy have there now? Uh, so it's, it's um, strong. Um, the population of New... But, but cooperative um, in a lot of them. Yes, I would say it is, it is, it is cooperative. Um, you know, of course, they're on the, 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 they're on a lot of their activity takes place on an island that you have to get to through a causeway. Yeah. But you have people, you know, Navy people and civilian working in the naval industry all over Aquidneck Island. Uh, we, so, uh, we, we as a station uh, had uh, uh, shows with uh, the War College. Yeah. Uh, we took uh, professors, we, we, we wanted to do four shows at a studio we have on the on Tarn River, uh, and we fixed the studio up in four shows. We wanted four shows, so we needed four uh, from the Admiralty there, was to get four willing professors that would come up that, you know, uh, and tell uh, their story. Uh, and they were very, very cooperative. Yes. And, uh, the, we did the uh, Afghanistan from inside Special Forces. We did, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the tragedies of uh, people trapped and we used the aircraft carriers that brought in supplies. Yeah. And some place in Africa, uh, I forget who the professor was, he said that they had to send in helicopters to clear the way to evacuate the people of Trito. Jeez. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but and, 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 and just so, so we did that for a while. We stopped that. I want to. I want to resurrect. But you know, the Admiralty changes down there. Yeah. Uh, every couple of years. Yeah. Year. And so, the, when we did it, the Admiralty was very cooperative. Yes. When we went back to do it, and I was always invited as a guest down there to the event, 
uh, we had uh, we wanted to do citizenship uh, at the uh, the Navy Academy uh, from service men and women, and I wanted to cover that. And uh, the, uh, the naturalization department here in Boston was cooperating with your judges in Rhode Island because uh, you know you would have. You had to have the states join together, yeah. but it would have been a great PR piece overseas. It would have shown the the uh, non uh, soldiers and sailors that it was a good thing right. to go in the United States right. service, to go into the service. Yeah, I and mean, it was a great propaganda piece. I never got to that point. <laughs> I had the Navy up, you know, wanted to do it. One, you know, it's like you did with the bridge. And one guy does it, the other guy doesn't want to do it. Well, that, but I, I would say this, Tom, that about that. Yeah. They, um, they are very connected to Salve Regina, which is very interesting. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of the uh, professors and some of the students from um, the War College are enrolled in this PhD program. Oh, I believe And it is, it, it, it is additive to the whole yeah. program. I mean, it's yeah. great. I mean, they're very, well, very you, smart, very on the ball. It's just yeah. great. Well, it's very, it's very uh, interesting. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and and uh, so when you look at, so look so, uh, anyway, the Jim, I, I really appreciated a, a number of things. Uh, <laughs> one is time. the politics of it, yes. how it changed horses every time you turn around, <laughs> and but it was, but the theory was that everybody was satisfied because they all had to get together eventually to pass that bond issue in order to start the bridge. Right, and then your intricacies of. The ridge in the bottom, yeah, oh yeah, that's the a, canyon, the Grand yeah. Canyon, and the thing about it is, I said off camera, you talked to your father, ran the uh, uh, airport for right, years, yes, right? Yes. Worked there for years, and I can, and you also worked there, I believe. No, you, no, no, you didn't no, work there. No. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I would have liked to have. <laughs> yeah, well, right, well, I'm going to get into a pattern. I was around. I was around it a but, lot. But you know, but I think you did. First of all, folks, he dedicated the book to his dad. His dad's a war veteran. Uh, dad, the person that ran the airport, he was very much involved in Rhode Island's uh, political uh, theory, and Jim is a very prominent figure in Rhode Island. <laughs> now, we're in Massachusetts doing this, but it's forgiving, because it's the entrance to a resort area, which is Newport. Right. So, it's a great book. Thank you, Tom. It's a lot of work went into this book. When yes. Somebody, you get this book, um, where, is this on sale anywhere? Oh, everywhere, Tom. You can get this on line okay. on uh, Amazon has it. The publisher has online the, the uh, history press, uh -huh. but you can get it in bookstores all over the East Bay of Rhode Island and down into Aquidneck Island. Well, I bet you can. Be yeah. um, the Newport Mansion store has it. The Marketplace has it, uh, you know, the yeah. Newport Marketplace. Uh, the uh, Barnes and Noble in Middletown, Barrington Books, Books on the Square in um, East Providence. I would say I would like to say though, in con when on that point you made up, uh, just made about my uh, uh, the three heroes of this book, who I mentioned, Chafee, Dwyer, and um, Hedefin, were all members of the greatest gener generation. After World War II, uh, no job was uh, too big, and there were no jobs were too many, yep. and th those people just uh, you know they made it happen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. So you get a shot. You get this book, The Newport Bridge, and we have with us the author. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very Tom. much for appearing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank